Some geology. Central Pennsylvania sits atop some of the largest coal deposits in the world, formed by millions of years of geological pressure. In the 1800s, miners began tunneling beneath the ground there to harvest it. By the mid 1900s, demand for coal dropped, and many of the Pennsylvania mines were abandoned. Back to 1962. No one quite knows how the Centralia fires started. The leading theory today is that burning trash near an old mine entrance accidentally ignited the coal beneath. Once it ignited, the fire began to spread. Coal burns when carbon inside it combines with oxygen. The tunnels provided oxygen from the surface. As more and more coal burned, the flames ate deeper and deeper into the surrounding terrain. And unlike wood in a forest fire, coal burned slowly and steadily, so the fires didn't burn themselves out quickly. So, what exactly is fire? Well, fire is the visible effects from combustion. Combustion occurs when a fuel is heated to its ignition temperature. It has enough available energy to react with oxygen, creating fire. Once started, the fire will keep burning as long as there's enough heat, fuel, and oxygen to sustain it. Depending on the conditions, this is why coal mine fires might burn for centuries. Coal naturally contains its own fuel and oxygen and burns very slowly. Once started, the coals can burn until the carbon source is exhausted. Back to Centralia. Because the fires were limited to the tunnels at first, the thousand or so residents found the situation amusing. But other, more dangerous symptoms of the fire soon appeared. Sulfurous fumes and carbon monoxide began seeping out of the ground, nearly suffocating some of the residents in their homes. Even more scary, the fire weakened the ground and left it prone to sinkholes. In 1981, a 12 year old was crossing a neighbor's yard when an 80 foot sinkhole nearly swallowed him. He was pulled out to safety by one of his cousins. Officials have attempted to put out the fire a few times over the years. One attempt involved dumping wet sand into holes drilled down from the surface to choke off the air supply. They also tried pumping air supply into the tunnels. In 1992, the state government condemned the city, the entire city. Today, just a dozen or so people live there. The Centralia Fire isn't the only underground coal fire in the world. They're actually alarmingly common, especially in India and China, which still depend on coal to a high degree and often have lax regulations. Natural underground coal fires also exist. Around the world, there are a few thousand of them burning, compared to about 1,500 active volcanoes. The Centralia Fire now reaches as deep as 300 feet and covers some six square miles. That's more than seven Disneylands. It's advancing around 75 feet per year along four separate branches and could burn for another 250 years. All the residents of the town may be gone by then, but the coal that brought their ancestors to Pennsylvania in the first place will still be blazing. I didn't know. That the town was being slowly eaten away. I didn't know that the community was being slowly destroyed. If we want to save this community for our posterity, we've got to do something now to save it. Well, it isn't very comfortable to live here anymore with the mine fire and the gases that we have to put up with. And just we're pleading for help all the time and don't seem that we're getting any, anybody's listening. I felt that the government knew what it was doing. I felt that I didn't have a right. I wasn't an engineer. I was only a housewife, mother. What do I know about mine fires? But when they came back, when the government came back and drilled around my property and the temperatures were 626 degrees, I knew that they didn't know what they were doing. And I knew I had to get involved. 50 years ago, when coal was king, Centralia, Pennsylvania was a boom town. People were optimistic, jobs were plentiful, and the future seemed bright. Today, this picturesque mountain community, 100 miles northwest of Philadelphia, is a place where the nation's most extensive underground mine fire has made danger and uncertainty a way of life. Almost every day, steam generated by the mine fire belches from the roadside, marking the steep entrance to the town. With an eerie reminder of the environmental nightmare which burns relentlessly 65 feet below the surface of the town. Huge vent pipes tower over this community of 1,000 people, 
allowing poisonous gases and noxious fumes to escape into the atmosphere. Of the 261 mine fires burning in America today, the Centralia fire is the only one which poses a direct threat to the health and safety of residents of a populated area. It is generally believed that the Centralia mine fire began in 1962 when burning garbage in a municipal dump ignited an exposed vein of coal. Once lit, the fire gradually crept through abandoned mine tunnels towards the town, endangering everything in its wake, including the timber and coal support pillars needed to prevent mine cave-ins. While the fire burns, it produces deadly carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide gases, which rise through the mine shafts and cracks in the rock strata, seeping into the homes of people living above. Attempts to suffocate and barricade the fire with a fine black powder called fly ash have failed.
everything stays trash.